So guys, look at what I just received in the post. This is all very exciting. If you have been considering your minimalist needs as a travel sketcher or urban sketcher, then I might just have the video for you today. So I got this little package through the post from Nomadic Artist. They very kindly sent me their travel watercolor palette to try out. They actually sent me two of them. One's black and one is silver. So Nomadic Artist is a UK based company and the owner said to me that they wanted to have a very small travel palette to throw in the bag, take everywhere and they couldn't actually find anything local to serve that need. They also went on to say that they find inspiration often strikes during life's ordinary moments, such as walks and commutes. So the more accessible your gear is, the easier it is to make the most use out of it. And I do agree with that. So these little palettes, um, they're kind of the size of a business card. They actually seem like they could be a business card holder, to be honest with you. And they've got this white section in the lid that is for mixing. And then in the body of the palette is a, a black magnetic area to which these metal pans stick very nicely to. The power of the magnet is, is really good actually, so there's absolutely no fear of these pans falling out or moving at all. So it's really thin, it snaps closed, it's really light and just yeah really really portable it's really nice and you can move these pans around however you want you, there's 14 of them in the palette you don't need to use all 14 you could just take out a few and use however many you want to use you can twist them around they can be vertical horizontal you can do whatever you want with them so the pans are half half pans um, but because they're quite shallow they're actually quite nice and large so you get a lot of surface area of your paint and therefore you can get a nice size brush into the paint, which I think is a, a really good idea. So, I mean, I've seen this kind of design before, Art Toolkit kind of springs to mind, but it's nice to have an option that's available in the UK and across Europe and stuff. In fact, the company say they can send it anywhere with free worldwide shipping, so that's pretty cool. And you can buy them on Etsy and Amazon, so I'll put the links in the description below. So bear in mind guys that this is a travel palette. So this is meant for people on the go, sketches on the go, and therefore it perhaps doesn't have the mixing areas you'd like if you're more into doing this kind of thing at home, if you're more of a studio artist. But for traveling, this lightweight palette plus a water brush is an unbeatable combination for on location watercolor sketching. So I grabbed this old uh, salad tub that houses my miscellaneous collection of paints and I hunted for some watercolour tubes that I could use to fill my palette with. So at the moment, well actually for the last few years, I pretty much exclusively use my White Knights watercolour set, but I do have some various tubes lying around from trying out different uh, brands and such like, uh, such as the Daniel Smith Essential set, which some of you might remember I've done a couple of videos on, a mixing chart and also how to mix neutrals from it. Also some miscellaneous colors that I bought before traveling to Iran back in 2018. And also the Schmincke Super Granulating Tundra set, which I got last year whilst I was back in the UK, just for a bit of fun, just to check out what all the hype was about. So once I decided which 14 colors I wanted to use, I started filling up the pans. Make sure you have a cocktail stick or something on hand. It's the best way to spread the pigment out evenly across the pan and make sure it's sort of touching all the sides and there's no little holes or anything like that. But I will say no matter how well you do this, some pigments do just shrink and sort of slightly crack a little bit once dry. But some of them do stay nice and smooth as well. It just depends on which pigment it is. I did manage to make quite a mess doing this, to be honest, standard behavior for me. So make sure you do cover your table surface, especially if it's precious or not yours, before you start doing this. I put my cutting mat back on the desk after I'd already managed to get paint all over it. <laughs> so this is now my completed palette. It actually took about three days or so to dry and become usable or portable. I was quite surprised actually because it's quite hot here and quite dry. 
So I thought it would take, um, I, I didn't think it would take as long as that. You know, when filling your pans, just be prepared to wait a few days for the paint to harden up and be ready to use and carry around with you. As mentioned, some of the paints will shrink a little bit and perhaps crack a little bit, but it's really not an issue to worry about too much. Now I am swatching out the colours that I put in my palette. There wasn't too much science behind this, to be honest, guys. As I've kind of mentioned, I just chose from the colours that I actually already had. If there had only been 12 pans, I probably wouldn't have chosen the super granulating colours from Schmincke, but I was curious to see how they would behave in pan form versus how they behave out of the tube. So yeah, it's something I've been wondering about. So it seemed like a good opportunity to try that out. Here are the colours I've included in my palette, again, for no significant reason other than that's what I had. The only disappointment really was that I couldn't get any more uh, paint out of the tube of French Ultramarine I had, one of the Daniel Smith colours. Um, so it is a notable absence from this palette, but we'll just see how I get on over time without that colour in here. The colours that I have in my palette from top left across the top row and then down onto the second row are um, Windsor and Newton Naples Yellow. So I've had that for some time in a tube because um, I know James Richardson, Urban Sketch James Richardson, from watching his Skillshare class, I know that he's a huge fan of Naples Yellow, so I wanted to get some and try it out. And then, I don't know, I just didn't really take to it too well. And then also with it just being in a tube, I just never pick it up and use it, but now I've got it in this palette, I know I'm going to use it. So Windsor & Newton Naples Yellow, then I used, uh, then I've put in Daniel Smith Hansa Yellow Light and Daniel Smith New Gamboge, those are the two yellows from the Daniel Smith Essential set, the cold yellow and the warm yellow. Then I've got Daniel Smith Quinadricone Gold, followed by Jackson's Raw Umber. And then the Schmincke Tundra Green, again, just for a bit of variation, really. It's because I had the slots, so I thought I'd use them. I never really use this colour, but maybe now it's here, maybe I will do. Uh, Jackson's Permanent Sap Green, not my favourite, to be honest. But again, I had the slots available and I thought, well, it'd be nice to have a green in there, I guess. But yeah, not, not my favourite green. And then Daniel Smith Pyrrol Scarlet and Daniel Smith Quinadricone Rose are the two reds from the Daniel Smith Essential set, so the warm red and the cold red. Um, and then the Schmincke Tundra Rose, another one of those super granulating colours. Uh, that's where the French Ultramarine was going to go, but I ran out, so I couldn't, couldn't do that one. The Daniel Smith Thalo Blue is the cold blue from the Daniel Smith Essential set. The Windsor & Newton Cobalt Turquoise, I thought I'd throw that in there because you can't really mix that colour and I, it's quite a nice vibrant colour. That was one of the colours that I bought specifically when I travelled to Iran. The Schmincke Tundra Violet, so another one of those super granulating colours. And then the Daniel Smith Payne's Grey, which again is not my favourite Payne's Grey to be honest with you, but I have it in a tube, so I actually prefer the Windsor & Newton Payne's Grey. And though that Schmincke Tundra Violet and the Payne's Grey next to each other from a distance really kind of don't look very different, but if you did look up quite close, you will see the nice granulation in the Tundra Violet and it is, it's a slightly different shade. But from afar, you might be thinking, well, why have you put those two colors in? And again, <laughs> just because I have them. So we'll see, I might use them, I, I don't know, we'll see. So I have taken this palette out and about with me, mainly to my weekly pilgrimage to the casino with some of the members of Urban Sketches Johannesburg. And I'm loving it so far. I love how compact it is. It is amazing. But I do feel sometimes I'm reaching for my White Knights colors, but that's just because I'm used to those colors. I think if I filled up this travel palette with my White Knight colors, unbeatable, I, I really, um, I'm really stuck in the zone with the, that White Knight selection of colours. Uh, maybe not all of them, I could definitely get rid of some of them. But um, yeah, I think for a minimalist watercolour palette solution, this is unbeatable to be honest. Whether it's, it's this palette from Nomadic Artist or something similar, 
They are just so convenient, they're so light, and it's just such a brilliant way to carry your watercolours around with you. You know, just to do those quick little watercolour sketches, add a bit of colour to a pen and ink sketch, sketches that are pretty low key. So you obviously wouldn't use this for a full on watercolour painting in your studio, but again, that's not what it's for. So. Um, highly recommend this palette guys do check out the links below and if you want more information from me more demonstrations more tutorials i share everything over on patreon so do go and check that out too thanks very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video